have some young geese here. It's beautiful. Hope you're doing well. We are continuing our reading of this radical feminist book. Okay, It is a tough read at certain moments, but by reading it, we can hopefully come up with solutions and deeper insight into their philosophy so that you know we can see where we differentiate ourselves as Muslims. Let's begin. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It is still hard for a lot of women to walk away from men, but not as hard as it used to be. When straight women are unlucky in love, they are usually persuaded that the fault lies in their own inadequacies or their own bad choices. So hold on for a second right here. Okay, to walk away from men. Okay, so to walk away into what? We should ask ourselves. You're going to walk away from them. So she's doing MGTOW is for men. Men, uh, men going their own way. And she's advocating for a WIGTOW. Women going their own way. <laughs> Which just leaves so many lonely and desperate. I mean, not everybody wants the Chelsea Handler lifestyle. Yes, it's not as hard as it used to be because, um, you know, you can take on massive amounts of debt. In order to go to college, get a home, a car, and there are, how do we put it, more intoxicants on the market. So you have edibles, you know, all the intoxicants you can use to cope with your own nihilism and, and, and loneliness in a way. So that's a coping, an unhealthy coping mechanism, and it's not as taboo for women to get totally blasted on you know bloody marys and mimosas so they're able to kind of mask that inner turmoil with intoxicants more easily now than it used to be in the past you know i think you know 60 years ago it wasn't a good thing to see a woman in a miniskirt and tube top stumbling drunk to her car at 2 a.m it just wasn't something that many women thought was empowering but today uh, that's obviously considered empowering to feminists. So, uh, it's not that hard to walk away from men in the beginning when you're beautiful. So, usually persuaded that the fault lies in their own inadequacies and bad choices. So, inadequacies, bad choices. So, it takes two to tango. I've said that before. But it is important for women to look at what bad choices did you make in men. It's very healthy to do that, I'd argue. Because you're the woman you receive. You open up. Now, you can be assertive and go for your stag. But either way you look at it, you consented. You had a hormonal reaction to this man. And you put your foot forward. You know, if we're talking about choices, right? You're the one who had to be the oyster. You had to be opened up. You had to be presented. You know, you had to allow this man to do the deed. And inadequacies, a lot of personality flaws, anger management. People, Some women not wanting to get sober. Some not wanting to be monogamous, right? And they simply need to work harder on being girlfriend material. Uh, sometimes, yeah, you do. So we shouldn't say girlfriend material. We should say wife material. And I've started to look at this as well. We're not. I was never talked about what it meant to be a wife. That's pretty freaky. That's Western culture. Now, if you don't have a mom, like I didn't have a mom, and you didn't have a dad, the television raises you. And liberals can say, well, people just got to parent their kids. So don't regulate what's on TV, but it really affects how you look at relationships. 
and what you think your purpose is as a woman. And you waste time being a girlfriend. Be a wife. Because you just get spun around. And then those same men who took a ride mock you later. You know? It's quite bizarre. And choose more wisely next time. Yes, you have to have... you See, she keeps wanting women not to uh, be responsible for their choices. You can say you're fooled. Like, I can say my mistake was, you know, looking at looks. If you see someone is solely developing a drinking habit, uh, with my very first relationship, you can see that, and they may be stunning specimens of men. But you see the red flag of liking to drink, and then you I didn't like to drink. It just, just is not compatible, and you think you can make them give it up, but you can't fix them. It's so strange. It's it's something that we women lie to ourselves about. Yeah, people can change, but you can't force them to change. And how much time do you want and energy do you want to spend trying to make someone change? So that was my fault, you know. This narrative does not allow for the possibility that it might not be entirely women's fault, but that a significant proportion of straight men might simply not be good enough partners. So she said significant proportion of straight men are not good enough. To be husbands, right? To be significant others. That's a nihilistic view. That's kind of like what the red pillars say about modern women. So you're seeing the same lines of rhetoric here. Because they have been raised to think of relationships as something to acquire. Not something that they may need to put effort into. Okay, so I can sort of agree with that. I'm, I think that is changing though. I think that is changing. Because... When you take a step back and you think like, okay, what does my husband need? What will my husband need? You have these conversations now more than ever openly. And I think that's going to help. But moms need to talk to their sons in the past generations. I don't think they did. And I don't think uh, male fraternities, male secret societies, male clubs male lodges, you name it, places where only men gather, I don't think they focused on how to be a good husband. It was more about, you know, networking, other things other than being good to your wife. Now, there's plenty of womanizing in those clubs, how to be a playboy. But I would say not necessarily how to be a good husband. That's where religion comes in, or is supposed to come in. Sexual revolution is not about women making smarter choices. Sexual revolution is about giving women more actual options. Oh, right? That's quite bizarre. Why wouldn't it be both? Uh, giving them more options as a mate, I would argue, is fine. But more sexual options just to ramp up, you know, 300 body count and risk STDs and abortion and trauma? I don't think that's right. And smarter choices should always be a good thing. You know, should you be sleeping with that guy just because he has abs and he tells you you're beautiful because you have a low self-esteem and he has a mattress on the floor and he doesn't really have too much ambition and he has a reputation of being a playboy in the community, you know, is that the best decision for your future? Probably not, right? Probably not. For some people, that's a bridge too far. It's too radical to actually allow women in mass to leave lux luster relationships when they are not loved actively in return. Okay, so not loved actively in return. Ooh. You know, you want love, but I think it's wise for women to think, Is he? can you tolerate him? You know, can can you tolerate him? There is these gold diggers who have a very interesting point. And I think that's actually more healthy than saying, like, okay, you have two options here. Let's do a binary right here. You can have a man who will provide, but you're not head over heels for him, but he's civil enough. Or you can have a broke man who loves you a lot, but he can't afford health insurance, he can't afford food. 
your children will suffer in poverty, but you have a romantic relationship and you're head over heels. You see what I'm saying? What is better for your children? The broke man may love you endlessly, but the, his love doesn't make your belly full and it doesn't pay PG&E, doesn't buy you quality meat, doesn't put you in a safe community where you won't have gunshots ringing out, okay? Or you can have a man who, you don't hate him, but he just is there and you can tolerate intimacy and he can provide for you fully. And your kids will have, you know, plenty of laundry soap for do their laundry. You'll live in a safe community where you don't have to worry about a crackhead stealing your bike or uh, raping you in an alley or something like that. You see what I'm saying? It's just, it's really how you look at it. So, if in love goes through these cycles. Your honeymoon phase, when you first get together, you see two lovebirds and you're like, Hey man, you know, but then they've been married for 15 years. Things kind of slow down. You might have an argument where you feel resentment for two weeks, you know. You have to keep that rose garden pruned and that's not easy. But just because you're not getting that love, how much can you take and do it for the children? You know, a good mom protects. Do it for your children. You see how hard birds work to keep their little chicks alive. They have to fly, avoid predator birds, to feed their babies. Like, m mother animals on this earth, you have to do a hard job. You know, hard job. I saw, I included the video in some of my others at the end of, I watched a mama mallard duck. She got her little ducklings and there was a kestrel, like, hawk falcon looking bird trying to snatch up one of her babies and she has to like spread her wings out and try to stop it so she has to protect her little ones you know constantly from predator birds and so there are tons of animals who they have to focus on what's best for their children and keeping their children alive their offspring alive I think it's very positive for women to start looking at that as long as he's not Tossing you around like how P. Diddy did to his woman, right? Uh, don't stay in that kind of a situation. But if he's just kind of monotonous, I don't think that's a good enough reason to leave it. You're not going to find this sort of uh, worshipping guy who worships you. I've seen some girls who've had that and they didn't want those guys. You know? It was fascinating. I've seen that twice where the guy was handsome and he was crazy for these girls. They're my friends and they're, these girls were beautiful. One was Persian and one was Mexican. And I was like, wow, you know, they're so beautiful. They don't even need makeup and they don't want those guys who other girls want so badly. You know, it's fascinating. But they didn't really seem interested in how much those guys were just overly lovey-dovey and trying to always be on them and stuff and so when she says actively loved and returned we must ask ourselves how do you want to be loved can you re can can you reciprocate the love that person's giving to you because remember she said earlier women they have they give too much emotional like work that it's emotional labor she said and that relationships are too much emotional labor so she was almost advocating for hookup culture. She puts out by the third date. So she kind of lets anyone take a hit. And so she doesn't really like marriage. You know where women wait and you keep yourself uh, low risk. You don't play Russian roulette with STDs. You know she obviously isn't that way. So I would be very careful when she talks about oh they're not actively loving you in return. Then bounce. Love is expressed differently by some men. Taking out the trash, coming home sober to you every night, uh, making sure that, you know, you live in a safe community. Men express love in different ways. And it's up to you as a woman to say, you know, am I being greedy with what I expect? Right? Am I 
giving as much as I want him to give? You know, how much can I give? These are questions you should ask yourself. When they are not afforded the care, decency, and autonomy they deserve. So autonomy. So care, decency, and autonomy. Okay, what kind of care are we talking about? Roof over your head. You have a clean water supply. Uh, shampoo products for hygiene care. He, he, you know, ask yourself how much care is he giving you? And then you can see, like, maybe it's more than what I think. And look at women, excuse me. Look at women who have less, okay, who are single, living in third world, impoverished communities. Okay, before you get too critical of what you expect. But every time a woman refuses to believe that the problem is with her, refuses to tolerate disrespect, cowardice, and violence as the price of love, it, it becomes that much easier for the rest of us to do the same. Okay, so let's examine this. Refuses to believe that the problem is with her. This sounds like a Lauren Southern type of line. She kind of uh, blamed everything on her man. And sometimes that does happen, right? I remember there was a video of an NFL player. He really beat the snot out of his woman. It was recorded. And yet she didn't want him to go to jail. She wanted him to go to therapy. And you're like, okay. You see, some of these women, they get beat on. And then they have still this attachment to the men who beat them. It's really quite bizarre. You, you know, she loves him and, you know, she ha herself has tolerated disrespect. She is herself a, a coward. So it's something to examine, you know, how many women themselves choose those men and then are really soft on it, on what they tolerate. So... Disrespect, uh, it's not good to have that. You want to keep it, keep it kosher, as they say, you know, but there will be fights. And it's, it's how you get over those fights that count. And women and girls are already walking away from dangerous, unsatisfying, exhausting straight relationships so what's funny the same complaints she has about heterosexual relationships are found in gay and whatever uh, rainbow mafia relationships dangerous okay i remember seeing data about how many uh lesbos beat on each other okay and then within the male gays the top bougie ones the ones who have like money, fancy clothes, they're not really monogamous. And that can be quite exhausting for the one who wants to be in the feminine role. So she's not being genuine here. She just wants to uh, attack heterosexuals. She has zero respect for those who keep the human species going. It's heterosexuals who keep the human species going. And she has a deep resentment for that. Choosing their own freedom over the often undependable security of male love, no matter the social cost. Okay. Choosing their own freedom over the often undependable security of male love, no matter the social cost. Okay. Hmm. Undependable security. Every relationship is going to have a moment of not having security. Okay? And I would argue that no job has full security. Neither does every relationship. Okay? That's just a fact. One second. Okay, sorry. I had to blow my nose. So, undependable security. I would argue that nothing in life is really guaranteed. And love is never going to be something that is this permanent thing, right? Even a mom with her children. You, you love them. They can grow up to be total 
terrible human beings and you don't love them anymore. Especially if they've done some violent, horrendous crime. So, <sighs> that's the paradox of love. It's, it's fleeting and it is conditional. It is conditional. There are more single women supporting themselves in the developed world now than at any point in record history. Okay, so this is something important to look at. You can only support yourself because there's men who are maintaining the infrastructure and paying into Social Security, men who are paying a high amount of taxes. Okay, we need to remember that. Without the social safety net, we would see a totally different society, all right? I do think that the government has positioned itself to be the husband. And this is all fine and dandy, one could argue, until they start cutting the budget. Now, America is a warmongering nation. Since the 17th century, America's always been meddling in some foreign affair. Okay, the military-industrial complex is huge. No one can deny America is a military base empire. And so, sure, you can think that you're supporting yourself. But when places, businesses close, when women are instead pimping themselves out and calling that empowerment instead of being a wife, you know, how are they supporting themselves is the question. Okay? If a woman works two jobs to support herself, and feels she's empowered but a woman who stays home and is a homemaker to her husband and she feels empowered who has a happier life a lot of women are in jobs they don't actually enjoy but that they need so when we say supporting themselves what are the conditions of their existence All right now I've made plenty of videos on the nuances of relying on a man and having a backup plan and stuff like that that's important. Gain skills so that in case so you something happens, you can have something to fall back on. But the old folks home awaits you. And I have watched a lot of abuse videos of that industry. You won't be able to support yourself forever. And once your sex appeal goes away, you'll see how different the world is for you. Women often treat the beautiful better than they treat the old and ugly. There's just something about that. So there is no sisterhood. And so we as women benefit greatly from men treating us as the fairer, the fairer sex, as the ones to be guarded and protected instead of them despising us and expecting us to work in construction and start to, uh, be men. You know. That is sexual revolution. So the sexual revolution for her is women supporting themselves and leaving lackluster relationships, uh, not really looking at their own bad choices and inadequacies. Uh, she's, I gotta say, she's just not somebody who I would uh, put as a role model for anybody. As marriage and birth rates continue to fall, world governments are beginning to panic and far-right parties openly run on platforms of returning women to their traditional role as mothers and wives. Heterosexuality isn't working for women, so how can they be coerced back into the kitchen? Okay, this is a very important line right here. She takes joy at marriages breaking and children not being born. She despises pregnancy, despises motherhood, and despises women uh, having a relationship with someone who is legally bound, legally and spiritually bound to them. She would prefer, as she mentioned in the other ones, the destruction of the nuclear family and of religion. So, sleep around, abort your kids, leave your children fatherless, and have your nation have little amounts of economic wealth and no longer be a hegemonic force but a satellite nation subservient to the hegemonic one 
So she has a very backwards view of the purpose of human life and the purpose of women. And when she says coerced back into the kitchen, I always despise that because it, it mocks. So she wants to have men cooking for her in restaurants, but she despises women who cook at home for their family and children. So she despises she despises the ability to even have the option of cooking. There were times where food was so scarce, people had to really go out and scavenge, okay? It's really important that we not forget where we came from. The fishermen who go out and get us all the wonderful goodies. Most fishermen are literally men, they're not women. Most hunters were uh, men. Now, berries are wonderful, scavenging for mushrooms, having a domestic tea garden. These are all important. But as a mom is taking care of her toddler, right, and she maybe has a newborn on her back, the man is out there getting the food. So she can have something to cook. If a woman had to go out and hunt a deer with a baby on her back, that would be quite difficult, okay? Nearly impossible and quite dangerous. Especially if you think of the predators that used to be out there. And she would have to leave her baby. Uh, imagine you just gave birth, you're not really healed, and you got to go out and hunt. The man loves you enough to bring you back something to eat. Really examine how she hates the kitchen. She has no passion for cooking. But she wants some line cook itching his nuts making her food for DoorDash. I worked in the restaurant industry for so many years, okay? All kinds. You'd be really surprised at the disgustingness. Cooking at home regulates a lot of foodborne illnesses for women who care about being clean in the kitchen. You know, some women are quite disgusting when they cook at home and are better off eating at a place that's regulated, but overall, moms who are good at cooking, man, it's wonderful, truly wonderful. And you can always be a private chef, have your own catering business, have your own food truck if you're good at cooking and you practice at home. So that's a skill to fall back on. The one obvious solution that nevertheless seems not to occur to conservatives is simply to make heterosexuality work better for women with all the effort and economic infrastructure that requires. It often seems as if straight men would do anything to force women to love them apart from the one thing women actually want them to do, love them in return and treat them with basic respect. Okay, I think it's really important for couples who've been married for over 20 years to start getting interviewed. We have too many single playboy men and ratchet, disgusting, manosphere women hogging the market. It's, it's really quite bizarre. I want to hear from the old people who are married. Their ups and downs, their lessons in life, people on their deathbed. That's where the wisdom is. It's not with Pearl Davis and Myron Gaines and Walter who got an escort Chinese spy pregnant. You know, that's... And she aborted his kid and he begged her to abort it. These aren't people to talk to about marriage. Okay? You can't... Or, and Tate is not somebody... The Tates are not someone to ask about marriage advice. They're serial cheaters. They make money off of making men's daughters whorlets. Why would you want marriage advice from somebody who doesn't respect marriage and is, is, is a serial cheater and boasts about it? You know, it's, it's just not... It's just not right. So we need actually married wise elders, not rich playboys giving advice and I think that would help people to actually see that love does exist that you know there is romance there is basic respects it's just that the algorithms the social engineers prop up the worst type of men and they they the, you know the adult entertainment industry pushes that as well which is something she advocates for she wants women to be loved and treated with basic respects, but tells women not to get married and to choose career and to not be a mom. You see what I'm saying? Like her ideologies is conflicting, but she can't see it. 
Instead, the only socially acceptable solution still seems to be for straight women to lower their expectations. Okay, so you want to have basic expectations of, I would argue, the Islamic framework is pretty good. The man provides, uh, he's sober, he doesn't have to be a millionaire. You know, there's things. Some women do expect a lot. Some women can get that, okay? There are some women who can get a man to pay for her car payments and constant vacations, all that. Okay. But if you're a woman who's working at CVS, you're working at Walmart, you're working at Starbucks, the Dollar Tree, you're average at best, you don't come from money, you, you know, you, you know, you're, I don't know, it's like you should have, you should have a realistic perspective, you know, that's how I look at it, and that, that takes humility, that takes a humbleness, there's nothing wrong with hard working men, men who do landscaping, construction, welding, blue collared men, you don't want these silk handed finance bros, I'd argue. They're going to be at work all day, staring at a computer, snorting cocaine. A lot of the finance bros are absolute degenerates. There was a guy, I'm going to share this news story. He worked 100 hours a week and died. Okay, look it up. Wall Street investment banker works 100 hours a week, dies from uh, some type of, I think it was a stroke or a heart attack. But he's working so much, he's like, how can you maintain a relationship like that? You're literally just alone with his money. You know, you don't even got time for intimacy or for to help you with the child. I'm like, what? So your expectations change over time. And that's something to think about. Okay, your expectations are going to change over time. It's Nothing's wrong with saying, I want a man who's sober, who's masculine, who will be a provider, who can buy me organic food. And who treats me with dignity and gives me intimacy when I want. And will spend time with their children. And who has his anger under control. I don't know. Basic things. This is Those are pretty good standards. And even that is hard to find. If you don't do it right. So look at your expectations. You want him to have a helicopter. And buy you Chanel bags. And... All your favorite makeups and have a private vanity desk for your room. And the, if it gets too costly, this is where I think Islam has the best perspective. Because this, this realm is temporary. And you're going to have to realize that you can only get so much here while you're a guest on earth. And you'll be returned to Allah. You ain't taking none of those material expectations with you. So behavioral expectations are something to look at. And that's something that doesn't cost money. And there's lots of good men out there. Finding a sober man is a lot harder though. You know, American men love to get drunk and use drugs. So, date an immigrant. Well, we can't date in Islam, but marry an immigrant, I argue. The idea that men uh, might actually need to work on being better partners is still taboo in modern politics. So much so that fantastic euphemisms are employed to disguise that basic failure. But women everywhere are refusing to settle for men who refuse to do that work. And every time a woman finally decides she would rather feel good than be good, the world changes fractionally and forever. Okay, so she would rather feel good than be good. I'd say be good and then hope to feel good. Okay. Yeah, if if you, I think it would be healthy for like, how do you be a good husband? But this is the hard part. Women will say they want something and then they get the opposite. They get the nice guy and then they cheat with some criminal felon who has all these tattoos and bulging triceps. You see, this is something that's really hard. Really hard because women will claim they want the men to meet all these marks. And they get it, and then they get bored of it, and they want variety, and then they make up an excuse to go. And they think the grass is always greener on the other side, and they dip out. 
because they overestimate their own self-worth you know, and it's just strange. Heterosexual love will only be truly free when women can choose to be with men, not because they have to, but because they want to. I've heard this argument from the rad fems. I've heard this. Uh, needing a man versus wanting a man. I would say you want him and you need him. Needing him, that's important, you know. You may not want him specifically, right? Maybe he's not, I don't know, he has a funny habit you don't like. But you need him, pay your bills, and let you be with your children. I wouldn't want to go back to the restaurant industry. I want to protect me from going back. I don't want to have to do it. I don't want it, so I need a man. I need a man to keep me in halal, right? Intimacy-wise, you, you don't want to do a zina. You don't want to commit fornication. So you need a man for that. If you become sort of a celibate leaning person and you think you can control that desire till you die okay because uh, self-pleasure is not allowed in Islam from my understanding I saw uh, Sheikh Hassim Alakim mention men are not allowed to do that so by extension women aren't allowed to do that either and you're not allowed to you know just have intimacy outside of marriage so if you need that desire fulfilled, then logistically you need a man. You see? Feminists think you can replace a man by uh, having a plastic appendage, we'll call it, keep it PG. I don't think that can, it can't reciprocate affection. And a lot of women report after they do that, they cry and get emotional and feel weird. Something to think about. Then they take an edible, and then they're in this twirly space for two three hours and they get they, the, the plane lands they come back to reality and then they want to get high again because they don't want that existential dread facing them in their black mirror and reminding them their lifestyle how they're living is devoid of human connection it's fascinating when love is no longer a service that one gender provides for another when everyone of every gender is invited instead to challenge a love's work. That's a romantic idea. And the original understanding of romance, which has nothing to do with flowers and platitudes or desperate competitive game of musical chairs, romance is the triumph of the possible over the merely probable. Okay, the possible versus the probable. What would it be like to live in a world where there was enough love, enough pleasure, enough care to go around. Enough pleasure? You see, she's a hedonist. It's a hedonist. Quite disgusting. Instead of calling people to control those desires, to keep it within the relationship, she sounds like destiny encouraging open marriage. There will always be enough love, but it fluctuates, and you may not get it, but you may be provided for, and that should be good enough. But if you don't think it is, have fun. Just being alone with the TV flickering or with your... Are you still watching notification on Netflix? Think about it. Your dog can't love you. It's really gross. Don't put your dog in human clothes or get a pet monkey and put clothes on it. It just ain't going to work, I would argue. Where people didn't have to scheme and cheat and bully affection out of one another. Where men, women, and everyone else would be able to meet as equals. To see one another face to face with all our flaws and broken hearts and battered places. And try to work out how to be human together as the world changes. You can figure out how to be human together when you get married. Okay. You don't need to bag a different guy every two nights in order to f figure out how to be a human together. What would it be like to love one another without the straight jacket of gender? It's, uh, she's like that type of person who's probably really creepy around little kids. 
Maybe it's because I'm a romantic, but I still think we'll find out someday. I don't think you're romantic at all. She's a cynical nihilist with a hedonistic flair. Not romantic at all. She attacks heterosexual love, which perpetuates the human species, in favor of sodomy and carpet munching. I don't... I don't get that. And, and this is, you know... Quite bizarre. Quite bizarre. I don't... And, okay, when a man and woman come together, there's an actual, like, pleasure there. I have read a lot of posts of men who become eunuchs. They have a wound. They have to dilate it. They don't get pleasure from it. It's a wound. It doesn't have the sensory nerves for pleasure. And they have to use a lot of lube or they feel like it's painful. And sometimes only four inches can fit. There's no pleasure in that. There was one man who did all the plastic surgery and he said he misses his tallywhacker because he, he can't he's tired of the brown star we'll put it that way and it's painful and it's not an organ that should be used for that and he'll probably have to end up in adult diapers when he's older because his sphincter will be so loose and the the tearing that happens and he misses his tallywhacker he can't they can't uh, have basic pleasure. And so they removed their healthy organ, which actually allows them to get that satisfaction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them. But they chose to slice it off. And even women who, they take skin from their arm and then it's rolled up like a sausage and stitched to their area it that doesn't have any sensory experience and it it's not functioning it's ornamental it can act cannot actually be used in intimacy okay it's flaccid it, it can't uh really help a woman feel anything okay it's too soft when pushed in to do anything they don't get pleasure from it and they have a disfigured arm so one must ask themselves you know she, is that romantic? Is that a romantic kind of love? Is that health care? You know, I don't think so. So, again, we must examine what she calls romance. And I would argue her hatred of pregnancy, motherhood, telling women to be alone and with inanimate objects, I wouldn't call that romantic at all. She has no self-awareness, this woman. No respect for the spiritual nature of intimacy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given humanity, right? And how it's supposed to be regulated, how your desires and lusts are supposed to be managed. She can't get that. She doesn't really see it. What she calls romance is just pure debauchery, pure degeneracy, licentiousness, depravity, grossness. That's what she is. It's not someone who is helping the mental health of women, but encouraging them to go wig towel. <laughs> it's quite bizarre. A very unhealthy uh, individual. She's been traumatized. And she is on a mission. And her mission is definitely not something that uh, Islam promotes, I'd argue. I hope you enjoyed. If you like to support my content and help me to keep doing what I'm doing, and read things that I write on the blog as well, you can do so by going to www.subscribestar.com slash Archive. I hope to see you there, and I do write a lot of stuff against some of the Radfems, so that can help in helping you to see what kind of arguments are presented, and if you like reading, which is good for you, you can read those as well. I have longer ones, shorter ones, you name it, but... I've touched on quite a number of topics, and we'll continue to do so, inshallah. I'm heavily shadow banned, so if you want to like and share, that would actually help. For years, I never said that, but the throttling is, is pretty strict now. And so, uh, I do need a little bit of help getting out of that jail. <laughs> it's, uh, 
it's when they they already got my second channel so you know and, and Instagram also is uh, throttling so many of the comments and the people who dislike me are actually more active I think than many people realize who just spread a lot of weird fake stuff about me in order to dissuade me from continuing my work but we'll continue inshallah but a safe bet is to go to the blog for more stuff especially if you like my community tab types of posts there's stuff like that as well on my blog so i hope to see you there take care until next time mashallah alhamdulillah so beautiful Such a stunning bird.